Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this is going to show you what is the fastest and most memory efficient way to create a string in C Sharp without having to deal with any unsafe and low level code. And like the title says, you should never really have to use this in your day to day programming life. This is here just for educational purposes and I am going to show you a total of four ways to solve the problem I'm going to create in the beginning. And yes, the three first of them are actually uh, applicable and usable easily. However, the last one and most efficient one, which this video is about, is here purely for educational purposes. There might be a 0.00 something percent of you who might ever need to do that level of micro optimization. But for the rest of us, any other of the three solutions will do just fine. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. But before I move on, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, the NDC conferences. Now, many of you reach out on Twitter and LinkedIn and you ask me, hey Nick, how are you finding ideas for your videos? How are you learning all those things you're showing and how can I learn them as well? And the answer is always, I'm attending conference talks. Now, previously in person, now online, and hopefully in the future or the very near future in person again. My favorite one to attend as a .NET engineer are NDC conferences. In case you don't know, are conferences that happen around the globe, mostly focused on .NET, but other tech as well and they happen every year. The biggest one is in Oslo, there's one in London, which is pretty big. There's one in Sydney, in Porto, and you can click on the website and the link down below to check them for yourselves. Now, just to understand how influential those talks are, Blazor was a talk given by Steve Sanderson in NDC. John Skitz abusing C-Sharp is an NDC talk. Jimmy Bogart's domain-driven design at the good parts is a talk in NDC. And the legendary The Art of Code by Dylan Beatty is also an NDC talk. So you can understand how much value you can get out of an NDC conference seeing these experts giving these talks. This year, I will be in NDC Oslo and NDC London. So if you want to come meet me, come watch these talks with me. Please click the link in the description, sign up, buy a ticket. You can also get your employer to buy the ticket for you. This is what I've done in the past. And let's have a beer. So I have this clear value, which is password one, two, three, exclamation mark. And then all I want to do is write a function that keeps the three first letters and then masks the rest of it with asterisks. That's it. And what I would normally do in a very like naive approach is I would say um, first characters here and then do clear value dot substring and get from zero to three. So get the first three characters. And then I could get the length, the remaining length. So the total number of characters minus the three I extracted basically. So clear value dot length minus three. And then what I would do is I would write a for loop um, and the upper limit would be the length, the remaining length. And for every iteration, I would stick an asterisk at the end of this first Charles variable. And then all I would do is I would say console.write line and I would print it. And that's it. So if I go ahead and run this, you should say that I get two identical things, one for what I want and one for how I did it with my code. Now, the problem here, and there's a few, but the main one, if you were to look at this from a critical standpoint, is that this operation here, because strings are immutable, you cannot really change the value of a string. You allocate a new string every time you change it. What this means is that for the, I don't know, eight asterisks or however many it is, nine, um, we're going to create nine different strings for this thing, which means that we're going to allocate a lot of memory that ultimately we shouldn't really need to do. And let me just quickly change that to a var. Um, and actually, so we can measure this and get an actual representation of how our code is performing in terms of speed and memory. I'm going to go ahead and add benchmark.net here. So I'm going to say benchmark.net and I'm going to add this package. And now with benchmark.net, I'm going to quickly create a benchmark class. So I'm going to say uh, over here, uh, public class benchy. And then I'm going to say that this is a memory diagnoser benchmark class, meaning it will collect memory metrics, uh, such as um, invocations of the garbage collection and also the memory that the method we're going to benchmark overall uh, costs or allocates. And I'm going to say public string. We're going to return the string that we want, which is um, effectively the uh, masked out version of that thing. So string or mask naive is what we're going to call this. And then we're going to take all that, stick it in here and then return it. So we're going to return first characters and I'm going to take that clear value as well. 
and I'm gonna put that at the top of this class so we don't have to reallocate it every single time. So we're gonna remove that and we're gonna say benchmark runner and I'm gonna say run this benchy class, this benchy benchmark. So now that we have this, I'm gonna stick a benchmark attribute here. I'm gonna change that to release and I'm going to run it. And by running it, we'll see how it performs and we're gonna get a baseline for all our following tests and results are back and as we can see we have a mean execution time of 98 nanoseconds uh, we have some garbage collection in gen zero and we have 500 bytes allocated not terrible but for that sort of operation we can definitely do better so how can we optimize this remember when i said that every time we iterate over this that we're going to allocate a new string because appending this uh, character will allocate a new string because strings are immutable well Actually, I know a better way to do this. We can use a string builder. And a string builder is a class, and we're gonna create it here. And we're gonna say new string builder, and I'm gonna put the first characters um, as the initial value. And then instead of appending on that first characters, all I'm gonna do is say string builder dot append this uh, character. And now instead of allocating a new string every single time, a string builder internally will not build a string until we say do string. So it won't actually allocate a new string every time we append something because the string itself doesn't exist until you invoke this to string. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark now with these um, two tests instead of just one. So results are back and let's see what we have. So as you can see, mean execution time of the naive version, 102 nanoseconds and 400 bytes allocated. The string builder approach, 39 nanoseconds, less than half, and 184 bytes, again, less than half. So this is roughly 60% more efficient in both speed and memory, which is awesome because we didn't really change much in our code. That's a very, very practical and usable example. You should be using string builders when you can, especially in scenarios like this, because they decrease your memory locations. It is faster because you only build the string at the end and in the meantime, you only append and you should really be using it. This is one of the examples that you should be using in your code. Now, I think we can do better than this still and I'm gonna give it a proper name once I have the solution. But for now, I don't think that we need the string builder. In C Sharp, the string has a constructor and you can say new string. One of those constructors is very interesting because it allows us to say, let's say var asterisks, and we can have a repeated pattern of a specific character. So I can say new string asterisk, and then I can give it a comma and give it a number, and for us, the number is the length of the asterisk that we want. And what this will do is it will repeat this character an amount of times for the value of the length. So that means that then all we need to do is return first characters plus the asterisks. And that's it. And so I'm going to call this mask new string. And this is another one that is very, very realistically uh, usable and applicable. You have many scenarios where you might need repeating patterns and this new string thing can really help you. A new string has usages even outside of this repeated pattern approach. So results are back and let's see what we have. So we were at 40 nanoseconds with a string builder, which was 60% faster than the original version. And now with the new string, we're at 21 nanoseconds, almost half of that string builder approach. And four times faster than the uh, naive approach, the original, and very memory efficient. We're down to 120 bytes. This is very, very low and very, very efficient. However, this is still not the most efficient way to create this string and solve this problem. And the next one will be the most efficient way. And we're gonna do that with the new or relatively new string dot create method and let's see how that works because it's pretty pretty interesting and this uh, example is carefully selected to showcase how it benefits us and how using it benefits us so what i'm gonna say is mask uh, string create that's the ultimate way of going about this problem so we don't need any of this all we need to say is return string dot create and let's see 
what this method takes. First, it needs a length. That is the length of the final string that we're going to return. And the reason for that is because this works with the span behind the scenes. And the span is an arbitrary size of memory allocated for your uh, benefit, your usage. And because it is a ref struct, it only goes on the stack. It doesn't go on the heap, meaning it won't cause those expensive allocations. And it kind of breaks these rules that strings are immutable within this delegate that you're going to see in a second, where we're going to be allocating bytes in a span. You won't be constrained by this idea that strings are immutable. You would be able to effectively mutate it, even though it's not a materialized string in terms of minus memory at that point. So let's see what that looks like. First, we need the final length and the final length is the length of the uh, clear value because it doesn't change. And then you need the value that you're going to have to tinker with within the delegate. So for us, it's the clear value. That's the value we are inserting effectively into uh, the string.create method. And then we're going to say span and I'm going to call it value. Then value is the same thing as clear value. So we can uh, deal with it and span is what our string's value will finally be. But at this point, it is a span. It's not a string. Remember, we're still dealing with a chunk of memory effectively. I think this will be way clearer if I just debug this for a second. So let me just remove this benchmark runner and instantiate this class. I'm going to say benchy equals new benchy here. And then I'm going to say benchy dot create a string. And I'm going to debug this. So change that to debug and call it. So let's have a breakpoint outside and then a breakpoint inside and see exactly what's happening here. So outside, you can see clear value, the full thing. We need the length because we need to allocate that size of memory. Then we have the clear value and then we go inside. And inside, you deal with the span, which is the span that you're finally going to spit back as a string. That's why you see uh, effectively what looks like an array of 12 um, char allocations. That's where your your characters will be allocated for the new string. And then you have the value, which is this clear value. Now, why don't we use the clear value from outside? It's because I would suspect that will cause a closure uh, for this delegate and it's not efficient uh, memory wise. If we do that, it kind of defeats the purpose. So we have the value in here as a parameter to deal with. And then all we're going to do, and look how simple that is, at least for our use case, is we're going to say value dot as span, and we're going to we're gonna take it as a span. And whatever starts with as in C sharp is casting, is not reallocating. For example, if you do to list or to array, those things are reallocating to create that list or the array. If you get something as something else as memory, as enumerable, as parallel, you're casting, you're not creating something. So as span, and we're going to copy that to the span. What does that mean? What does that look like? Let me debug again and show you exactly what that is. So here we have the span, which is currently just empty. And then we have the original value. So if I step over that and I go to the span now, the span has been written with the values from the raw text, the clear value. So currently the value of the thing that this thing will create, the new string, will be the same thing, password one, two, three, exclamation mark. Now what we want to say is span from three and pick a range and then fill the rest of that with asterisks. And it looks like we're going to be overwriting the rest of that string from the fourth character onwards with asterisks. But really, because we are within that uh, scope here, the span itself, the value of the span is not reallocating any memory. So again, let me just debug again and see exactly what this is doing. So now we have the span uh, here, all the, the characters are here. And if I do the fill thing, then you see that I have pass and then all the asterisks. So that is the most efficient way to solve that problem. Not the most easy to understand if you're not familiar with span, but it is the most efficient. And let me just show you how efficient it is by commenting out uh, this or re reversing the comment out and then clicking release. 
and running all the benchmarks again. And let's see what the final outcome is. So results are back and let's see what we have. So that is absolutely insane. So comparing to the first naive approach, this approach, the string.create is 10 times faster. It is just 10, almost 10 nanoseconds compared to 100 nanoseconds. And memory wise, it's almost 10 times more memory efficient, only 48 bytes. Now, does this mean you can actually use this anywhere? No, it doesn't really mean that. One of the bigger limitations of this approach is that you have to know the length of the final string up front, which sometimes is not really the case. So it becomes hard to use. However, the approach with the new string and even the string builder is significantly more efficient than the naive and reallocating approach by creating a new string every time. So as long as you're careful when it comes to that, then any other solution that you come up with should be fine. However, if you do have a use case for string.create, feel free to use it, uh, but feel free to also explain to your teammates exactly what you're doing because it is relatively new, it is relatively low level as well, and even though it's a really cool feature, it can be hard to understand. So don't prematurely optimize something that you don't need to optimize just to use the feature. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.